I know that it's really scary, and I know that your mind might be telling you that you're the exception, you can't heal. I thought the same thing, okay? There is hope. Apply these things, and it will radically help your recovery. Welcome. So in this video, we're going to be talking about five things that you can do to speed up your healing of depersonalization and derealization. Now, I want to be very, very clear because sometimes people watch a video where I highlight a single thing or one aspect of recovery and they think, oh, well, this is all that I need to do. I want to be very clear. There are other things that you need to do besides this. This is simply a huge part of recovery. But just in case you're wondering what are all the things that I need to do, I have created what's called the S5 method, which is where I've taken everything that I've learned after working with thousands of people, after uh, having the privilege of getting to work with some of the top trauma experts in the world, and I've put that all into an online program called the S5 method. And it has helped people see incredible results from all around the world. There's a link in the description below for that. But what we're gonna do today is we're going to highlight a very essential uh, part of recovery. And my S5 method, I call this sensory integration, but let's simplify it into mobilization. We're gonna talk about movement and how movement is essential to get you out of the freeze response, which is a trauma response. So. We're gonna have to unpack a few things here, so make sure to watch this whole video, because uh, here at the beginning, I'm gonna have to spend probably four or five minutes in terms of education. So real quick, before we begin, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jordan Hardgrave, and I'm the creator of the Trauma Free Academy, where we help traumatize people experience post-traumatic growth and reclaim their life using the healing power of their own body. Make sure to subscribe uh, if you want help on this healing journey. Make sure to click like. Um, comment, share, all that stuff. I know, really long intro today, guys, but you know, I gotta, I gotta do that. So let's go ahead and kind of explain some things from a scientific perspective related to depersonalization and derealization. So whenever I first started to experience depersonalization and realization, first time was back in 2008. This was before I fully recovered. I was terrified. I thought that the symptoms were dangerous. I thought that they represented something very, very, very serious going on. And you should always go to a doctor, right? It's very important because sometimes depersonalization, realization are there due to something medical going on. You should always get a full medical examination from a doctor. You should also see a licensed mental professional. Those things are very important. But for me and for most of the people that I come across, there isn't a medical or neurological issue going on. It's the buildup of stress, and it's typically ac accumulated stress, meaning that it wasn't just one big bad event. So for me, I had a bad marijuana experience in 2008, and you could say that that was like the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, my parents went through a terrible divorce whenever I was young. I was severely bullied for years and years and years. I struggled in school immensely, and there was just a lot of things that had happened. And also right before the bad marijuana experience in 2008, I'd gone through a really bad breakup with the girlfriend that I had in high school. I think we were together like three years. And then she ended up dating this guy that I really didn't like. And I also didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. Um, at the time, nobody had really taught me confidence or how to think even, how to really pursue something and learn it. And so I thought that I was dumb. And I didn't think that I had a future. And so I was really sad about that. And so hung out with my friends and you know they offered me marijuana and I had a really bad reaction to it. I smoked way too much. And I had maybe smoked marijuana, I don't know, just a few times in my entire life prior to that. But they were like seasoned smokers and they had me smoke the same amount that they were smoking. And I had a full blown panic attack and I thought that I was dying. And eventually, during my panic attack, I reached a state of nervous system overwhelm, right? I was at first pacing back and forth, which was allowing me to not have to feel my heart pounding out of my chest as much. I was using positive self-talk, Jordan, you're gonna be okay, you're gonna be okay. But they wouldn't call an ambulance because they were afraid that they were gonna get in trouble. And eventually I reached a state of nervous system overwhelm. But it's very important to point out that it wasn't just that event. It was that event coupled with all the accumulated stress that had been building up, building up, building up 
for years and years and years. And the marijuana incident was the straw that broke the camel's back, where you could also say, I'll use my amazing <laughs> cow mug, I think this is my wife's, you know, it was the drop that caused the cup of water to overflow, right? And so this is complex trauma, which is a series of stressors and adversity that builds up over a very long period of time, whereas a major trauma is just one big bad event. It's like a lightning strike comes out of nowhere, um, and it causes a state of nervous system overwhelm. So anyway, once I reached that state of nervous system overwhelm, my brain thought that I was being eaten by a lion, and so I started to go into what's called the freeze response. It also is called the trauma response. It's also called uh, the shutdown response. It's also called the immobilization response. All these terms are pointing to one thing. This ship is going down, and let's make this person's death by lion as numb and painless as possible. That's what your nervous system is thinking whenever you reach that state of nervous system overwhelm, that you're about to be eaten. And so depersonalization, which is where you start to feel disconnected from your body, or derealization, when everything becomes fake and dreamlike, are there to help you. Because if you're being eaten by Tony the Tiger, it's a lot better to not feel it. It's a lot better to be to be depersonalized and derealized. But people don't know this. I didn't know that. And whenever I started to experience those symptoms, I freaked out. I really did. I was terrified. And it made me panic even more. Now, thankfully, the panic attack eventually did calm down. And although it did take me a while, eventually, fast forward, I did finally figure out how to permanently recover from these symptoms using my body. And the rest is history. I made a YouTube channel 2017 because I had made a commitment that if I could heal, I would help other people heal too. And I've been spending the last number of years symptom-free and helping other people, and it's it's been very rewarding. But there was a time where I didn't know all this. So the reason why I gave you this education is because you need to understand what's happening. You are in the freeze response, and your brain wants you to stay frozen, right? This is also called feign death. You've heard uh, playing possum or a possum will freeze or a deer in headlights if you kind of if you drive by a deer on the side of the road, it'll just kind of freeze. It's a mammalian defense mechanism that is designed to convey to a predator that you're dead so it loses interest and walks away because predators prioritize a prey that put up a fight. And so in the freeze response, movement is dangerous. If you move and there's a lion there, the lion's going to think, oh, this will be fun. This thing's still got a little fight. I want to chase it before I eat it, right? Well, as humans, when we access this response, we don't always become completely frozen, although we can. What it usually looks like for humans is you're laying in bed and your mind is telling you, don't get out of bed. Don't go out of the house. Don't go to the gym. Don't go in social situations. Don't go to work. Don't go to school. Just stay there. It's safest if you just don't leave your house. And it's gonna feel dangerous to mobilize. And because it feels dangerous, most people yield to that. And I've worked with so many clients before that they spent years in their bedroom. I've even had some clients that stayed in their bed for nine months. In fact, I've got a, a client, he's almost symptom free, he spent over nine months in his bed, and now after working with us, he is he actually doesn't even like being home that much now. He's doing drift racing, and he is on his way to being symptom-free, and it's freaking incredible. But anyway, what I'm saying is if you yield to the voice of the freeze response, you're going to stay frozen, and so you're going to have to mobilize. This is part of the S5 method. This is part of recovery that I teach because whenever you mobilize, you're showing your brain that there is no lion because if there was a lion, you would stay frozen. So by staying in your bed all day, by not doing the things in life that you're supposed to be doing, that you enjoy, that are normal, that's one of the things that's conveying threat to your nervous system that is keeping you stuck in the freeze response. Here's something that you can do to mobilize. Get dressed up every day because whenever you get dressed up, it's gonna make you, it's gonna make you wanna go out. Whenever you get dressed up, you feel good. 
right? That's one reason why I made a commitment years ago that every single day I'm going to get dressed up. My wife <laughs> doesn't always love it because she's like, babe, like we're just going to Walmart. Like, do you have to, do you have to, I'm like, I just have made that decision. Even if it's on weekends and we're going out to a restaurant or something, like I'm always going to make sure that my hair is fixed, that uh, I'm wearing uh, good clothes because it just makes me feel better. It really does. It's like an energy thing, but get dressed up. That's going to make you want to mobilize. Next thing is go get a haircut. I have a commitment that I always get a haircut. I schedule it because whenever I get a haircut, it makes me feel better. It makes me want to uh, go out there and just tackle life. And it's the same with you. It also represents normal. Whenever you get a haircut, that's something that you would do if there was no threat. The next thing, go for a walk every single day. When you're walking, you're not only getting the health benefits from walking, but you're also moving, you're mobilizing, and that's conveying safety to the nervous system. If there was a line, you would definitely not be going for a nice, slow walk outside. The next thing, don't lay in bed for more than 10 minutes, right? Whenever you're in bed and you know it's comfy and you're fatigued and your brain is telling you to, to stay stuck, it is so easy to yield to that. Make a commitment to yourself, write it out. I am somebody who gets out of bed within 10 minutes every single day. And lastly, number five, identify things that you're avoiding that are healthy and do intentional exposure plus relaxation. So let's say driving, for example. Let's say you're running from driving. Well, intentionally go out of, out of your way. Take a whole Saturday and drive while constantly relaxing the body. Because if there was a lion in the car, you would not be exposing yourself to it and you also would not be relaxing your body. These things are opposite than threat. And this will start to rewire your nervous system, okay? So those are a few things I could probably list more, but again, this is one part of recovery. Make sure that you get the S5 method if you want uh, to know the five things that you need to do to just flood your nervous system with safety, to rewire your nervous system, to get you out of this traumatized state. And again, if this helped you, please click the like button and uh, comment something below if you have any questions, share this, and I want you to know that there is hope. I know that it's really scary, and I know that your mind might be telling you that you're the exception, you can't heal. I thought the same thing, okay? There is hope. Apply these things, and it will radically help your recovery. And look in the description. We've got a, a number of uh, resources. There's even the free five shift still from Trauma Masterclass that you can take. If you don't have any money, um, you can do our paid courses. We also even have a 12-week mentorship program where me and my team can work with you. There are options that I've made available for you to get help. And also, you know, pursue a licensed mental health professional, uh, pursue other people as well. There are options for you, okay? You're not alone, and I believe in you.